problematic is that they often require the seeker. This is, this is what came to me and now it's reminding me. When I spoke of guided imagery and I spoke of meditation, um, yeah, some of the guided imagery actually you're putting, you're, because it's guided and you're giving them the images, the children, the images to, um, in their mind and so that they can self-regulate um, their emotions and their behavior. Um, but there are certain meditations in which it literally tells you to empty, to empty your mind. And that is very, very dangerous. And I just remember uh, something that happened to me a long time ago. Uh, well, someone shared this with me. And um, it was someone that I knew a long time ago, and he was into martial arts. And I remember him having this very, it was very intense. He was a person that was very, very quiet. And he didn't talk a lot. And I remember him calling me. And that was probably the most he ever talked to me. Um, I'd see him or whatever. And he called me and he went on. He was talking about some experiences that he had. And he's the type of person that um, he had been in martial arts for a while. Um, he'd done other things as well. So anyway, he was telling me that he, they required him to do all this meditation. And he started to say some very strange things started to happen to him. He was a very proud man. And he started to actually admit that he got scared. And for him to say that on top of him not talking a lot really meant something. Um, and he just said he started to have these very weird experiences um, during the meditation but outside of the meditation. And he went into a great detail of what he started to experience. It was almost like waking, like what they described in the other, um, the other um, website, uh, Mind Body, I think it said mindbodygreen.com. He started to what sounded to me like visions, waking visions, okay? And um, they became very, um, the little bit I can remember, um, but the feeling I got from them is frightening. Okay, I can't remember all the details. This is a long time ago. But he was really bothered by it. And he, like I said, this was the most he had talked in all the time I'd known him. And he just, he, I think he just needed someone to talk to um, and get it out. But he, he went on and on about these, these freaky things that were happening to him since he did that and he basically told me I'm not meditating ever again and I can't blame him so it's a word to the wise even if like we're talking about yoga he's doing martial arts I don't know anything about martial arts he told me things you know me I have a bad memory but you have to be very 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 careful um, with those things and he learned the hard way um, that when you empty your mind, um, like I said, when you empty your mind, other things come and it's come to occupy it. Okay? So it says this is not the Christian definition of meditation. Christian meditation means ruminating and considering God's word, contemplating it throughout the day. Looking inward will never bring us closer to God and we must look first to Jesus who is the founder and the perfecter of our faith. All right, my final thoughts. So like I shared here, some of the sources that I found online as well as personal Experiences are experiences that other people had shared with me in regards to, um, you know, doing certain things. Like I said, in I just said a little while ago about the gentleman who, young man who was into martial arts, he was in a variety of other things as well, and him actually being very vocal about um, being encouraged to meditate and to meditate regularly and how he started to have these very um, disturbing um, experiences with meditation and he wasn't the type like I said the type of person very proud man he wasn't a person to be constantly you know talking about things and complaining about things you know and you know whatnot um, 
but for him to be that I mean he was like talking the most I've ever <laughs> ever saw him ever talk I mean he called me and I thought it would be like the usual you say a couple things or whatever and you know the conversation the phone call was finished this is not what happened and he just was very spooked by it and rightfully so um He's a very um, wise young man as well. So he was saying, oh my God, this is horrible. This is horrible. It's happening not just when I meditate. Now that I'm not meditating, it's still happening. So you have to be very careful. So I do want to read something here um, that they say. It says, spiritual warfare is real and should not be taken lightly. Because we know, like I said, if you have eyes to see, the things that we're saying is not normal okay it's becoming common but it is not normal okay um, people taking out entire families um, the, the smallest thing set them into a tailspin okay and there are people and there are cases and I think it happens more often than they are reporting it um, but um, you will hear stories in which people will say um, I'm hearing voices, okay, and they're telling me to do this, and they're telling me to do that, they're having dreams, there, there are people that are very tormented, now I know there's a thin line between that and mental health, mental health issues, and other things of that nature, but I do believe, I don't claim to be an expert, but I do believe, I have a theory, that even certain spirits can work through you through that just like some people say trauma when people are highly traumatized um, these spirits these um, negative things influences work through that they're attracted to you and they work through you they're not to say that your your situation is hopeless no we're all vulnerable okay whether we have mental health issues or not because a lot of times people will say in in the um, these cases these stories or whatever is that this individual they weren't like that I, I don't know what happened it seems like it they're a different person I just can't believe they did that some people say it and you kind of like you can kind of tell discern uh, I don't know if they're just saying it for the camera you know and not to speak ill of the person you know in front of everybody but some of them I really believe are genuine they really are saying this is I've seen so many stories in which people are like I can't believe they did this I can't believe they went and they you know mass shootings and then a lot of times people are crying out for help and they're saying these things and they're seeking out for help and people you know for whatever reason um, they're not getting the help I'm just gonna leave it like that they're not getting the help and sometimes if people don't want to accept certain things then that's another that's there's so many working parts there so it says spiritual warfare is real and should not be taken lightly but God is the ultimate victor and able to overcome everything now if our worship does not consist of emptying <laughs> does not it consist of us emptying our minds but rather of filling our minds and I want to add fill our hearts with God and his word okay we'll be okay okay however if we empty our minds through other things like um, they say Eastern meditation we're, we're it's like a door we talked about that a door a portal and things come rushing in you have to get a handle it's not easy okay it's challenging for everybody you know you feel it it's very prevalent it's moving through every sector of this society and our world um, and we all have to be vigilant okay so it says Matthew 12 43 45 says helps us to see the importance of filling rather than emptying I like that our minds they said there are numerous parallels between the Kundalini and this passage the Kundalini awakening involves seven openings requiring a spiritual emptiness that Eastern meditation actually seeks it says each of the seven chakras with more compulsive and negative aspects could represent increasingly uh, 
evil spirits. So what is perceived as the seven chakras awakening is the increasingly evil demons filling 